Well, on today's edition of Laguna Wood Stories, we're very privileged to have in studio two handsome gentlemen that, uh, that look like they might be related, and in fact, I know they are cousins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so on the right, we have uh, Alan Williams, and Alan, you, you live here in the community. Uh, how long have you lived here in Laguna Wood? Well, this December, it'll, it'll be three years. We just moved here from Kingston, New York, right? and we were looking for a place to retire, my wife and I. And we didn't want to go to Florida because of the bugs and yeah. the humidity. So, so we were coming out to California a couple of times a year, and we and we uh, came by here because we have family out here, mm -hmm. and we found Laguna Woods, and um, and the rest is history. Right. And we love it out here. Love it. And to your right, uh, uh, introduce the gentleman sitting here. Right? Uh, a gentleman to my right is is my cousin Tony Lindsay, L I N D S A Y. Uh, we grew up together in Kingston, New York. And yeah. now he lives in the San Mateo area. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, for those who ha don't now recognize the name, what, what's Tony best known for? Well, he's, he's been uh, best known for a lot of things. One, uh, <laughs> well, in one your family. Thing, uh, no, oh, no. Uh, uh, one thing, he's, he was with Santana. He was a lead singer uh, with Santana for 25 years. 25 years. Lead singer with Santana. Yes, sir. Carlos Santana. And during that time, he has garnered uh, 11 Grammys. Wow. So he's been singing, uh, you know, most of his career since we were kids. We grew up singing. Uh -huh. And fortunately, he kept on singing um, through college and when he moved out here in the 80s up in Northern California and then uh, kept singing with bands up there. And he finally got, a, got with Santana. And uh, again, the rest is history. So he's right. been very, uh, you know, very successful since okay. he's been out here. And uh, Tony, what, uh, what brings you here to uh, Southern California? Well, come here to perform at Laguna Woods okay. at the Performing Arts Center. And uh, I'm glad to be down here. Everybody's been so nice. I love it. Great. Yeah, we've got a show coming up with my group called The Soul Soldiers, and uh, we're going to have some fun. You uh, chose a, a bit of a tongue twister for your group name, as I discovered trying to say it earlier, but Soul Soldiers. Soul Soldiers. And uh, uh, tell us a little bit about the group. Well, um, we've got seven members in the group, and the reason why we call the Soul Soldiers is because the, uh, the music that we do is music from uh, Marvin Gaye, mm -hmm. uh, Lou Rawls, Bill Withers, Sam Cooke, Donny right. Hathaway, wow. Aretha Franklin, uh, uh, Nancy Wilson, and uh, Etta James. Right. And we're even going to throw some Santana stuff in there, and we might even throw an Earth, Wind & Fire tune or something in. Mm -hmm. We want to get people dancing and mm -hmm. have a good time. Mm -hmm. Wow. Sounds like fun, and, and so you have a show coming up. Uh, I, on the poster here, I see that that November is... November 10th. November 10th. At 5 p.m. And uh, in uh, the Performing Arts Center. Right here in Laguna. I was going to say Clubhouse 3, but we now call it Performing Arts Center. I like Clubhouse 3. That's, that's, that's a nice name for... Uh... <laughs> so, uh, so your whole group will be here, and, uh, and this is sponsored by the Old Pros. Yeah. And uh, so tickets are available now, I presume, in the box office. And, yes. And uh, uh, so it's, it should be a great show. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. Uh, we'll be playing a lot of music that, you know, people will be sitting there and go, oh, man, I remember where I was when that song came out. Yeah. You know, it brings back memories, and that's what, uh, that's what music should be about, too, you know. Um, whether memories, memories were good, good or bad, they're going to bring them back. So. Right. Yeah. And hopefully mostly good. Oh, yeah. Yes. It'll be good. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Alan, uh, wh when did you discover that your, your cousin could sing? <laughs> oh, well, we knew that since we were like seven, eight years old. Yeah, we were, yeah. Young. We were young, man. Yeah, we used to, matter of fact, we started, we were just talking about this. Um, you know, we're older now. We still talk about our childhood. We started singing since we were seven, eight years old on the street corners in Kingston, New York. We started singing. Um, when we were kids in his hallway, he had his little box and he has little sticks playing drums. And, uh, and the good thing about that is that our parents always supported us no matter what we did, wow. no yeah. matter how much noise we made, yeah. how loud we sang. His mother never said, cut that noise out. So obviously they must have knew something that we didn't know. Right. And, um, <laughs> And, and they were very, very patient. People. Yes, yes, they oh, were. And they great. always wanted us to have better than what they had, so, you know, growing up. So, so were there more in your group then? Do you have brothers and sisters and uh, more cousins? Or? Well, our, 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 our uh, siblings also sang, but the, uh, but the main group was the four of us. 
it was, uh, the, and we call ourselves the four of a kind. Huh. Tony, obviously, me, another guy, Stephen Riddick, and Edward Ector. So it was four of us. Yeah. And what kind of music did you sing as kids? Oh, well, wow. yeah, we sang what, <laughs> you know, what was out there then, the Beatles songs, mm -hmm. Motown stuff. We sang everything that was... Mm -hmm. You know, it was out during that time in the 60s. We actually sang 60s. songs that we didn't even know who the artists were. <laughs> That's right. We, come, we, we started looking that stuff up now because there was this one song called Come Back My Lover that we sang. And I'm like, well, I didn't, I still, who, who did that song? I don't know, Come Back My Lover. It sounded like it might have been something done by a group like Little Anthony and the Imperials yeah, uh -huh. or something. But I don't think it was Things there. you heard on the radio probably. Yeah, well, actually, that, that song was brought to but, us by a guy that was kind of teaching us how to sing how harmony. To sing harmony. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of teachers during the way. We had a, a wonderful mu uh, a music teacher, Miss Landsman. When we were in elementary that? school, these were people that, that, that nurtured us coming up and taught us a lot, uh -huh. actually, about singing and, and being professional and also being on time. Yeah. Was, was really <laughs> a big thing. That was one of the biggest things. Yes, yes. So she taught us um, how to be professional, how to, uh, you know, keep our, uni our outfits, you know, Looking good. Oh boy, she was. Yeah, else she was a she was a stickler took, on. Took, make, the, make. took the little stains out of the white <laughs> out of her white shirts for us. Maybe sure oh, our yeah, shirts were white. She she wanted you to look sharp yeah. as well as sound sharp. That's and right. We did too. That's right. Yeah. And we 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 look good and you know the, the thing that was really great about it is that um, we had so much fun as when we were kids. Our parents they, they always knew where we were. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's we were right. either, we were either in school, uh -huh. come home and do our homework, and then we would go practice. Or you know we were playing little league baseball and all that kind of stuff too. But our parents always knew where we were. And we were only 13, 14, 15 years old, so they never had to worry. They knew yeah. where we were, and the people who we, who we were with always, you know, they were our guardians. Yeah, they, they trusted, trusted, they trusted wow. and, 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 and we great. trusted them. So That's great. That's a, a great childhood memory oh, and, yeah. and a good oh, yeah. foundation for Oh, um, yeah. Now, how did you get uh, connected with Santana? That seems like quite a stretch, really. Yeah, well, actually, it, it, it wasn't. Because I've been, I, I, I do so much music stuff that uh, mm -hmm. we had a band uh, up in the Bay Area, a group called Spangalang, that I still... Okay. I keep going. We got, of course, different members now. Spangalang for two languages? Uh, no, <laughs> actually, Spangalang has a musical meaning, and a lot of people don't oh, know it. No. It's the uh, rhythm that jazz drum drummers play on the cymbals. It's called oh, Spangalang. Really? Okay. You know, know it. and um, it, it was weird, too, because I remember this one time we're playing at this club in, in Santa Cruz, and this guy comes in, and we're setting up, and he comes up and he says, uh, Spangalang here? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, yeah, we're getting ready to set up. He says, nah, you guys are not Spangalang. So Spangalang is actually <laughs> was a voodoo artist in the, in the, uh, in the uh, oh. West Indian Islands. Oh, really? Hmm. So he said, no, 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 there's no voodoo here, <laughs> <laughs> which was interesting. But the whole thing with the, uh, the connection with that and the Santana, um, it was a guy, a uh, keyboard player uh -huh. by the name of Chester Thompson. Chester was in a group uh, by the name of uh, Tower of Power. Huh. If you're familiar with Tower of Power, Power it is, they're still around. Huh. So Chester, keyboard player, he was playing with Tower of Power. And when he left them, he went to play with Santana. Uh -huh. Now, at the time that he was in Tower of Power, um, one of the drummers, the main drummer, Dave Garibaldi, had, had, had stepped away from Tower of Power for a while. And he was replaced by a guy by the name of Ronnie Beck. Hmm. And Ronnie Beck and Chester had become really good friends. Uh, Ronnie left the uh, Tower of Power. Chester went to to Santana, and when Chester would come off the road from Santana band, he would come and you know find us. And this one time he came to one of our gigs and he said, "Hey man, uh, Carlos is auditioning singers. If, if you're interested, he said I'll throw your name in the pot." So. Wow. I did the audition and uh, the rest is history on that. I was uh, a number, I was out of 12 people, I was, I was the 12th one to audition. Okay. And the last one to do it, and I was the one that got the gig. Oh, well, well, very good. Yeah. So your, your, uh, uh, your talent was fresh in their minds, I guess, when they made the decision. So that, uh, that's well, an advantage sometimes to be the last. Well, that and um, when, I, when I went in for the audition, which I hate, I hate doing auditions. I would guess. But I was, uh, they sent me a couple of things, uh, some of the material ahead of time, and I went in there and I knew what I was doing and just nailed it and left. That was it. So you did Santana for 25? 25 years. My gosh, that's a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you know, to be 
involved in one group, et cetera. Yeah. So, traveled, what, pretty much the world? Uh, probably around the world, probably a good 20 times more, and I'm still doing a lot of traveling even My now. Gosh. But yeah. where were some of the more unusual places that you performed? Uh, well, we oh, played in places like uh, Croatia and all that, and some of the places that we played, like in Croatia, they had, not long before that, they had a big war there. Mm. And it was, uh, it was kind of interesting. They we wondering why there were so many females at the show. A lot of the guys had been oh, wow. <laughs> been killed <laughs> off in the war. Oh, you know, and there, was, there were quite a few places that we sad. played in. Um, I mean, God, I mean, playing in Greece. Yeah, you know, and it's looking at my hotel room and see the Acropolis right there, mm. and you know, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, a lot of memories go back, but there's so many places. It's so yeah. it's so hard to remember what's, a lot of that. What's stuff. the hardest part of traveling like that and, and performing all over? Uh, well, it depends on how you travel. Yeah. You know, when we traveled doing all those places, of course, we were, we were flying either business class or first class, so mm -hmm. it made it a lot easier to For sure. be able to lay Stretch back. Stretch out and, a little bit. Yeah. The hard thing, though, is there's a lot of groups that were, that, that just travel on bus everywhere, mm -hmm. and they're sleeping in those bunks. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't do that. Right. Because, you know, you, you get in those, and the, the air is not circulating right, and <laughs> and if you have to sing, your environment is very, very important. And uh, yeah. what you sleep in, and air circulation, and it can't be too dry, can't right. be too cold. Right. I can be a pain in the neck sometimes when it comes to that stuff. But. During these years, uh, did you have a family? That uh, yes, yeah. Uh, so my wife Julie, and uh, I have a son Nicholas. So, so that must have been difficult. Could, could they travel much with you, or not, not at all? Not? You know, it's funny. <laughs> Uh, people always ask that, but my wife came out with me a, a one time. I said, you know, I think I better do this because, you know, I, I don't want any questions of, how come you never take me? <laughs> so she went one so time with us and we played, and this was a short run. Yeah. We live in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. So we had to play, we did a couple shows in like Seattle and Portland and all that, mm -hmm. which are really short runs. Mm -hmm. And we flew up to Seattle. But then the rest of it, we, we did kind of on the bus. Uh -huh. And it was only for about four days. They were worn out when they she got had, home. She had mm -hmm. enough of it pretty they quick. They said, no, we don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> and I started doing the Santana gig when uh, my son was just six months old. Yeah, yeah I, I, I imagine the, the excitement of it uh, wears thin after a while. Yeah, for, and with me, I mean, that's what I'm used to. Yeah. I, still, I still travel all the time. I'm do you? Back and forth uh, to Europe and South America, and so how long have you? Uh, you did you put Soul Soldier together? That's yes, I did. Group? And, and how long has, has that it's group been, been going? Almost four years now okay. that the Soul Soldiers have been together. Uh -huh. And uh, I couldn't do anything before that because all the Santana stuff was taking up so much of the time right. that I didn't have a chance to, you know, really spread my wings. And I put uh, a group together with a bunch of my friends, and we've been having a good time. That's great. And one thing he always did when he was with Santana and he came back home to, 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 you know, to perform, like in Albany, New York. We were from mm -hmm. Kingston, but he used to perform in Albany a lot or Saratoga. Mm -hmm. He always made sure that he had tickets for his family to come uh, and see him. Very nice. Didn't really. forget about you. No, no, that's one thing. He, did, he never forgot where yeah. he came from. Yeah. We're still, well, we've been, well, cousins and friends since we were eight years old. Yeah. So we still have the same friends that we had when we eight years right. old. Oh, yeah. And not many people can say that. That's, That's true. true. So, yeah. And the other cool thing was, my mother seen me, my dad passed away when I was 17. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was going to be turn 18. He's, he's been gone a long time. Yeah. But my mother has, has seen me through every phase of music that wow. I've been in. And, and the, the crazy thing is, too, is... Uh, her and Carlos Santana's birthday are the same day. Mm -hmm. right. And they were <laughs> tight were friends. Close. Yeah. Yeah. And she's been to several Santana shows and she used to always tell him, I think you're going to be a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And he's actually kind of doing that stuff yeah. now, too. Well, it's, uh, it, it takes, uh, I think, uh, almost supernatural power to, to live in that kind of high visibility uh, a stressful world without yeah. uh, and, and hold a family together and and hold it together yourself. So yeah, it's congratulations. It's, it can be it can be a struggle, you know. And it's you know it, 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 there's so much uh, observing that I had done throughout the years. With when when you're the main focus 
of anything like Santana, for instance. There's so much stuff that he has to deal with all the time. Yeah. And me, I'm, I'm actually one of, I was actually one of the main focuses, especially on stage. But at the same time, I'm not getting the attention like he is. So mm -hmm. I get to sit back and watch things happen to him. And it's like, man, that's a, that's a lot of pressure sometimes. Mm -hmm. But and now that I'm no, you're getting flying the pressure. by myself, <laughs> you know, but you know, it's, it's, it's a different thing. You know, it's, um, I don't find it so hard to handle. Good. You know, because I, I don't have to walk around with an entourage and all that kind of stuff. It's like, I'm just, I'm just Tony Lindsay, that's it. And, and uh, it's not new. Yeah, uh, exactly. You, you've been there before, so you kind of have some idea what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for coming in. And, and uh, Tony, remind us uh, a little bit about your performance again. Uh, your soul soldiers oh, yeah. are going to uh, perform al along with you. So that's going to be here at Laguna Woods at, at the Performing Arts Center on November 10th. Right. you got my group, the Soul which is Soldiers. A, uh, a Sunday, I think, at, yes. uh, at 5 o'clock. 5, 5 p.m. So tickets available right now. At yes. The, uh, now. Uh, and hurry yes. up and get Fox them before office. they sell out. Thank you so much. We've been talking with uh, Tony Lindsay and uh, with his cousin, uh, Alan Williams, who lives here in the village. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to your performance. And Alan, good to get to know you. Thank you. Same here. Yeah, you'll see him around town all the time. <laughs> all right. We're delighted to have a studio today, Sheila Vialka. And uh, Sheila is very active with the old pros, and uh, uh, we'll learn a little bit more about uh, some of the things that old pros have in, uh, coming up. But first, let's learn a little bit about Sheila. Sheila, where did you begin life's journey? Um, Birmingham, England. Ah, yes. uh, I was on the stage when I was five. Is that right? Tip town, dancing, tip, you know, <laughs> Shirley Templeish. Yeah, I, I think my mother had ambitions that I'd be another Shirley Temple, but the, the, didn't happen. The English didn't Shirley happen. Temple, but <laughs> yeah. no, that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah, no. but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's where I started, and then the war interrupted my uh -huh. career because I was evacuated just oh. after I was five. Oh, really? The war was started in England, you know, in yeah. 1939. Yeah. So. And were you uh, taken out to the countryside as many children I was, were? The whole school went, yeah, yeah. We went out to Repton near Derby, which is the place where they made Goodbye Mr. Chips, the original oh, film. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Repton School. It's a public school in England, private uh -huh. school. It would be American. Mm -hmm. You know, the boys wear the boater hats in the summer and oh, the yeah. top hats in the yeah. winter. Yeah, yeah, the it's whole, all very, whole very English posh. Scene. Very posh. So. But a s small village. And I was there till I was seven. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what it was, my mother was worried, you know, because Birmingham is the industrial centre of England. Right. So, of course, we took a lot of bombing. How did you happen to come to the U.S. and when did that happen? Oh, well, um, I was working in London and I met up with some girls there. You know, we were all sort of girls together. Were, were and you working said, in theatre at that point? or? Yeah, a little bit in and out, you know, sort mm -hmm. of different things. I was a receptionist. And, you know, the things you do sure. when you're trying to... To support uh, your habit yeah. of, of acting. <laughs> and the, this girl, these two girls, are mother and daughter, and they said to me... Um, we're going to America. I said, oh, you are? Really? Why? You know, how? They said, oh, there's an agency here in London. Why don't you apply? You work as a domestic servant. Oh. And after you've paid your fare back, they mm -hmm. pay your fare over. After you've paid your fare, you're free to go. Oh, I said, fine. You know, it sounds like a good deal to me. So oh. I went and applied and I thought I'd be sent you know, somewhere where they were. Right. No, no. I went to Hartford, Connecticut. Okay and work for a family in West Hartford, Connecticut. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. that's another story that, you know, I just don't want to get into. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there for three months. And again, I met a, a mother and two daughters who mm -hmm. lived in Hartford. And they said, why don't you come live with us? So I said, well, fine. That's, that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I went and lived with them. And I worked for a, a, a company called EJ Corvette. If you're from mm -hmm. New York, you'll know that company because they had a... Uh, you know, a, a, a branch in Hartford. They liked me because I was on the switchboard. I'd been in the I'd been in the Air Force, and I was on the switchboard in the Air Force, so I knew how to work a switchboard. And they liked my accent, so oh, I yes. could broadcast. You know, in the store, mm. it was a bit of a snob value for them. Right. <laughs> and there was a young man who worked in the store, an Englishman, and uh, he came to me one day and he said, um, "Sheila, have you ever done any dancing?" I said, mm. "Yeah, I've been a ballroom dancer with my brother." He said, "Well." You know, there are people here 
that want to learn to dance. He said, oh. they have weddings and bar mitzvahs and birthdays. And uh -huh. he said, everybody's got a Finnish basement in this country or mm -hmm. in this part of the world. Uh -huh. Let's teach dancing. I said, fine, you get the clients and I'll help you. Wow. And that's what happened. We were teaching dancing and making quite a lot of money as well as keeping our jobs. And wow. um, one day he's driving past this place called the Institute of Living in mm. Hartford. Okay. Big mental hospital. Wow. He didn't know what it was, but he went, <laughs> ignorance <laughs> is bliss. He went in one day and asked them, did they like uh, dancing teachers? Did they use dancing teachers? Uh -huh. And they said, yes, as a matter of fact, we do, but we have someone at the moment. And he said, but anything happens, leave your card. Mm. Well, they were so private, this, this hospital, that if you got your name in the paper, even if it was for good reasons, uh -huh. and the Institute of Living was mentioned, you oh. were fired. Oh, mm. oh wow. Yeah, they, they were, uh, for many years, they would not even hire anyone who came from the state of Connecticut. None oh, of the AIDS. Known. No, they had to bring the AIDS in from Maine and Massachusetts, oh. and they put them in houses that they owned, which has have since become Trinity College was just up the road, really? and they own all these houses now. They're fraternity houses, but originally they belonged to the institute. At the time, it was called the Hartford Retreat for the Insane. Oh, but really? they did change okay. the name to the Institute. So, of did Living. you teach dancing there? <laughs> <laughs> But I loved it. I loved uh -huh. working with mental patients. Uh -huh. Oh, well, I felt like I was at home, you know. <laughs> now, if that had been physically ill, I couldn't deal with that. But mentally ill, right. didn't bother me. Didn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> I was as crazy as them. But I had a great time. I worked there for 30 years. And taught dance and, and drama. And drama. Yeah. Okay, so you yeah. got back yeah. to your drama roots. Absolutely. Okay. And, uh, and we did some great things. I mean, you'll find most mental patients, they are not very socially adept right. relating to other people. So drama, you put them on the stage and they've got to rely on each other uh -huh. to do a part and, and do a show. And they have a... a and they a, have to get a, a, a rapport persona going. persona that you've given them. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. so it worked out very, very well. I uh, mean, I had some great results, mm -hmm. you know, psychological breakthroughs. Uh, so, you know, I, I just love the, I love the job. I oh, love well. the job. But then... I got fed up with the winter. Yes, I lived in Scraping Connecticut your for a car while. Off. I understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brushing the snow off. And I, yeah. I sat there one day and I looked out the window and it was snowing. And I'm thinking, I've got to go brush off my car. I've got to go to work. What the hell am I doing sitting here? I'm possessed <laughs> by my possessions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I decided I'd got friends who lived out here in um, uh, your Belinda. Oh. And they had written to me and said, why don't you come out? Why don't you come out here? It's lovely, because they'd come from Hartford. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought, oh, what the heck? I'm not doing anything. So I rented my house, packed everything into my little SUV that I wanted, and took off. And somehow you got to uh, the Goodwoods Village. Uh, I got to several the years Woods ago. Village, and, yeah, through a long circumvented way. But, you know, eventually I made it here. All right. And um, I've been here 20 odd years, 23 20? years. Wow. Yeah. Well, enjoyed myself here. And I among, enjoyed myself Among here. your other uh, activities here, I understand that you're the uh, founder of a group called Old Pros. Uh, Absolutely. How did that happen? Well, I was a member of the Theatre Guild. As a matter of fact, I, I wrote, directed, choreographed, and produced their first musical uh, and made a lot of money for it. It's called Trip Fever. And I did a couple of three musicals for them, a couple of, couple of plays, mm -hmm. and then... I got rather annoyed because, you know, they were asking like 60 and 70 year old women to play 18 year olds and 19 year olds, which is impossible. Mm. You can't have an 80 year old woman on stage pretending she's pregnant. I don't care how good an actress she is. <laughs> so I said, well, let's get somebody from the outside. We were heavily involved with a, with a group from um, Laguna Beach. Oh. Very good group. A lot mm -hmm. of them were semi-professionals and professionals. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, these people will come and help us out. No, no. They said, no, they'll be stealing our parts. They'll be taking parts away from us. Oh, okay. you know? So I said, well, this is this. So you me. started a new so organization. So I said, let's start a group that we can bring in people from the outside. <laughs> so that's how <laughs> and, the Old Pros started. And you started. served then as president of Old Pros for some time. I was president for three and a half years. And, you know, in between vice president and had to step in and I've always been on the board for 15 years I've been on the board. Now we uh, 
as an earlier part of, of today's program, we, we uh, met Tony. And, uh, Tony Lindsay, yeah. And Lindsay and, and, uh, and his brother. And, and uh, his, tell cousin, us, his cousin lives there. Cousin, same. you're right. Cousin uh, Alan Williams, who played you. Charlie Brown in, a, in You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Yes. And Alan yeah. said to us one day, how about bringing my cousin in? I said, well, who's your cousin? He said, well, he sang with Santana. For 25 <laughs> years, he was the lead singer and won 11 Grammy Awards. I said, oh, my God, we've got to bring this guy in. Right. <laughs> so he's coming in next month. Okay, so uh, we're almost out of time, but you give us some particulars on the, on the day and time? Yeah, and... It's, uh, it's November the 10th. It's a Sunday afternoon at uh, 5 o'clock. Tony Lindsay, he does all kinds of rhythm and blues. He's worked with everybody from Aretha Franklin to Lou Rawls to an amazing amount of people. I mean, he's just wonderful. He's just fantastic. So it's going to be over in Clubhouse 3, Performing Arts Centre at 5 o'clock. Tickets are on sale now. Please come and see him because right. he's got the most magnificent voice and he's got his own band with him and they do rock and roll and every kind of blues, <laughs> everything. So it should be a good show. So thanks, uh, Sheila Bianco, for uh, coming in and sharing with us.